Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the effect of sympathetic stimulation on the heart. Okay, so we are discussing how sympathetic stimulation can increase the inotropy of the heart, i.e. how it can make cardiomyocytes contract uh, more powerfully. Okay, so now let's discuss how we can get cardiomyocytes to contract more powerfully. So firstly, let's discuss the nature of these calcium signals. So in the ventricular myocyte, when this ventricular myocyte undergoes an action potential, you will get calcium going up everywhere in the cell as it's released from the SR everywhere, and that's because of the T-tubules. In atrial myocytes, you don't get that, at least not at rest. You just get the calcium going up in the periphery. Right, so in either case, let us plot the calcium signal. So in fact, let's start with the ventricular myocyte, because the ventricular myocyte is easier, and then we'll discuss the uh, atrial myocyte. So the ventricular myocyte, if we plot calcium concentration in the cytoplasm of the ventricular myocyte versus time, what will it look like? Well, basically, when an action potential happens, calcium is going to go up. Now, when that action potential finishes, calcium is going to go down. And the reason it's going to go down is that there is a pump in the sarcoplasmic reticular membrane, which I'll colour in orange here, known as the circa 2 pump. Okay, so I will um, write this name down here. Okay, so this pump, this orange pump that we have drawn in the membrane of the sarcoplasmic reticulum here, this is what's known as the circa pump. And specifically, the form of circa that is expressed in cardiomyocytes is circa 2. Okay, and this stands for sarco slash endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. So the sarco slash endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. And this pump basically returns the calcium from the cytoplasm of the cardiomyocyte into the, um, into the SR lumen uh, after the action potential is finished. Okay, so here is this orange pump here, circa 2. Right, so what's going to happen is if this represents the SR lumen, so this is the inside of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, then this side is the cytoplasmic side, and then what circa is going to do is it's going to pump two calcium ions back into the SR lumen. So here comes the two calcium ions in exchange for free protons being pumped out of the SR lumen. So here are these free protons being pumped out. And every time it does that, it's going to take in an ATP molecule, and it's going to hydrolyze the ATP molecule to ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and an inorganic phosphate molecule, like so. Okay, so that's why it's an ATPase. It hydrolyzes ATP down to ADP, an inorganic phosphate, and uses the energy released from that to pump the calcium ions back into the SR lumen in exchange for protons coming out. Okay, so back to our graph of the calcium signal in a ventricular myocyte. So this is a ventricular myocyte at the moment, which I'll call the VM. Okay, so what's going to happen is after the calcium goes up and the action potential is now gone, the calcium is going to go back down because circa will pump it back into the cyto into the SR lumen. Then you'll have a gap until another action potential comes along. So when the heart beats again, another action potential will come along, and uh, that will cause calcium to go back up. Then the action potential will gone, and then the circa will pump it back in. So when the action potential goes, that means the L-type voltage-gated calcium channel is going to stop allowing calcium in, and that's why the type 2 ranadine receptors will stop releasing calcium, okay? So that's why uh, you stop releasing calcium at this point here, and then circle will pump it back in, which is why calcium goes down. Okay, so you get these calcium oscillations, and when the calcium goes up here, that's when all of the sarcomeres within the cardiomyocyte will start contracting, okay? Now, how could we increase the force of contraction of this ventricular cardiomyocyte? Well, simple. We could make more of the sarcomeres contract. So, this is my question to you. When a cardiomyocyte contracts, do you think that absolutely every single sarcomere in that cardiomyocyte will be contracting? 
The answer is no. Some of them won't be. So if we could make more, if we could recruit those new sarcomeres to contract, then uh, we, could, um, we could get a greater force out of our cardiomyocyte. Okay, now a way that we can do this is by increasing the amplitude of this calcium spike, basically. This, um, if, we made, if we released more calcium and the cytoplasmic calcium went higher, then we would pr presumably, um, we would presumably recruit the other sarcomeres that aren't at the present uh, contracting, and we'd get them to contract. So we'd get more sarcomeres contracting and therefore a greater force. So if we increase the spike of this calcium, then uh, we, could, um, we could increase contraction. However, what you do not want to do, you do not want to increase the baseline calcium. What you do not want is this. You do not want the spike to be higher, but then the resting calcium to increase up to here. You do not want that. What you want is you want calcium to spike right up and then it to come back down to this resting level here. So you want to maintain the same resting level here, but you want the amplitude of the spike to become higher. The reason you don't want a, rest, uh, a resting amplitude to, um, the reason you don't want the resting level of calcium to increase is because if the resting level of calcium increases, then you won't get full relaxation of the sarcomeres between beats. Okay, so let me say that again. At the moment, when the calcium goes up, that will cause all the sarcomeres to start contracting. When the calcium goes back down to this tiny, minuscule, nearly zero resting level, then all of the sarcomeres will relax, and they will recoil back to their original length just by elastic recoil. So they'll return to their original length, and everything will be as it was originally. Then, when the next action potential comes along, you can contract fully again. If the calcium does not go down to that tiny little resting level, if it stays up high, then um, what will happen is you won't fully relax. Instead, some of the sarcomeres will remain contracted, so the cardiomyocyte won't have relaxed fully back down to what it was originally when the next action potential comes along and it contracts again. So, you can't get the full force out of this next action potential because it can't contract those sarcomeres that are already contracted, because they're already contracted. If you've got a fully contracted sarcomere, you can't make it contract anymore, so you can't get any force out of it. So, so you want, basically, you want more contraction when you're actually beating, but you do still want full relaxation. Otherwise, if sarcomeres remain contracted uh, during the interval, uh, then when you next fire an action potential, you can't contract those sarcomeres anymore. So you can't get any more force out of that sarcomere. So what you want overall is you want to amplify these calcium oscillations so that they are higher, but you still want the same resting level of calcium. You want this in green, basically. So you want to elevate the calcium spikes. Now, in atrial uh, myocytes then now, what you want to do is you want to increase the amplitude of the calcium um, um, signal that is coming in at these synapses here. So you want to activate the L-type voltage-gated calcium channel so that it can release more calcium into the cell with the hope that it will increase the calcium signal from the um, type 2 ranadine receptors in, in this synapse. And your hope is that if you get a big enough calcium signal around this synapse, then it might just spread onto these ones down here. Okay? And if some calcium drips over onto these, what's that going to cause? It's going to activate the type 2 ranadine receptors here. So they're all going to release calcium. Okay? So you'll get calcium released from these. And uh, then... The calcium released from these might drip over onto the next ones, spill over onto the next ones, and that will induce calcium released from these ones. So you'll get this uh, conduction of calcium-induced calcium release, uh, and this is like a saltatory conduction mechanism. So saltatory conduction doesn't just refer to uh, the conduction of action potentials along uh, nerve cell membranes. Uh, it refers to any process where 
The process happening here induces the process in its neighbours, which induces the process in its neighbours, and it conducts like that. So this is a saltatory conduction process. So let me put that down here. So saltatory conduction. So if you could just increase the amount of calcium being released at this synapse, whether it is from the L-type voltage-gated calcium channels or whether it's from the type 2 ranadine receptors, and we'll see that we're doing, going to do both, you're going to lead to, hopefully, the calcium signal being large enough that it spills over onto these, fur, these, well, these um, processes that are further down in the cytoplasm of the cell. And then you'll get saltatory conduction into the cytoplasm of the cell so that the calcium signal will spread and then you can turn this what was a peripheral calcium signal into a global calcium signal where it happens in the entire cytoplasm and again that's now going to lead to massive uh, increase of the force with which this uh, atrial myocyte uh, contracts because all these sarcomeres in the center now will also be contracting as well as just the ones in the periphery so overall in ventricular myocytes, what you want to do is increase the amplitude of the calcium spikes. In atrial myocytes, you also want to increase the amplitude of the calcium spikes. You want to increase the amount of calcium that's released from the L-type voltage-gated calcium channels and from the type 2 ranadine receptors. But again, you want the same phenomenon as here. You don't want to raise resting calcium level. If you raise resting calcium level, then you'll keep sarcomeres contracted in the supposed relaxation period and then when you come to have your next uh, calcium signal then you won't be able to contract those sarcomeres that are already contracted anymore so you won't be able to get any work out of them basically so again what you want to do is you want to increase the amount of calcium that's released during a spike but you also want to the calcium spike to be removed basically quicker as well. So you want to release calcium quicker, you want to release more calcium, but you also need to activate the mechanisms for removing that calcium afterwards. Because if you left the me mechanisms for removing calcium uh, afterwards as at the same level as they originally were, then they're not going to be able to clear all this additional calcium that you've released and you're going to get a, uh, a raised resting level of calcium which is not helpful for increasing the force of contractility. So, overall then, we want to activate the release of calcium from the type 2 ranadine receptor and from the L-type voltage-gated calcium channel so that when an action potential occurs, we get an increased amount of calcium released from the SR and also an increased amount of calcium coming in from the extracellular space to trigger the ranadine receptor's release. So we want to activate these two uh, so that we get a steeper incline of calcium and overall a bigger calcium signal within our cytoplasm. And in addition, we need to activate the circa pump so that it can return this calcium from the cytoplasm back into the SR lumen so faster in the interval, basically, so that we go back down still to a resting level of calcium and uh, then the, um, all the sarcomeres can relax back down so that we will uh, get um, so that they will all be ready to contract fully again when the next calcium signal comes so that we can get the maximum work out of our cardiomyocyte. Okay, and we'll continue the discussion of actually how does beta-adrenergic stimulation activate these three proteins after in the next video.